Hi, this is Susie Williams with Essential Oils, Health Matters, and Living the Wholesome Life, and we are on week nine, day three, I think, of our positive, peaceful growth journey, where we are doing a positive affirmation every single day. Uh, I can't tell you how fun it is for me to be doing these affirmations. I don't know if you've been following the affirmations, but if not, go back and check them. I'm sure you're going to have totally amazing thoughts on the affirmations. My guess is you're going to connect. They're going to connect with your heart and you are going to love focusing on um, a different area of your life each day. Okay, so you, if you've been following us, you know that the, um, well, first of all, we're using this book, which is by Dr. Susan Lawton, and it's called The Positive Peaceful Growth Journey, and you can buy it at Aroma Tools or My Oil Life. And the affirmation for this entire week, which I'm super excited for, is I am saying yes to life all week. And I'm, I'm really excited for that because to me that saying we're saying yes to what brings us and our families and the people around us more life. So um, we're saying yes to joy and happiness. We're saying yes to hope and peace. We are saying yes to possibilities. It's, it's just an amazing um, thing. And the song that I'm connecting to this week for the whole entire week is um, the song by Jason Mraz, which is I Want You to Have It All, where a, a dad is singing to his daughter, a community is singing to a little girl, on, I want you to have everything good in your life. And I do think that that's how Heavenly Father is, that he wants us to have every good thing in our life. And what we might think is good for us, he might not think is good for us. So sometimes when we're asking for things that he doesn't think that are good for us, as any wise and kind and good parent, he's not going to give it to us. But um, sometimes we are asking for things. And sometimes it's good to pray, Heavenly Father, what do I need? It's always a super good prayer to say. Okay, so you all know that with every Caleb, with every um, week, we do a diffuser blend. And the diffuser blend that we're doing this week is two drops of coriander, which is the oil of integrity, and two drops of ginger, which is the oil of empowerment, and two drops of lime, which is the oil of zest for life, which I think is an, a, a completely amazing diffuser blend for this week as we're trying to choose life, we need to have um, the integrity to look at what is it is, what is it that we really want? And what is stopping me from getting that? We need to have the ginger, the empowerment, knowing we can get what we want. And we need to have the lime, the, the zest for life. Not that we need to, but just that the zest for life is going to flow as flow back to us as we're connecting with with life um, and being thankful for life and seeing the good in life. You know, lime's gonna, that um, zest is gonna flow, flow back for us, to us. So, um, the affirmation, that besides the affirmation for this week, we also have an affirmation for the day. And today's affirmation is, I am saying yes to virtues that I see in myself and others. And I think that as we're, as we're saying yes, there's two different things that um, we can do. We can see the virtues that we've already developed and maybe journal about that. Say, you know, um, in a humble way, but in an honest and authentic way, we can say, hey, I'm really good at being friendly. I'm really good at I'm talking to people. I'm really good at um, being kind. I'm really good at waking up in the early in the morning. Whatever it is that we're good at, that's a virtue. We can let's journal about it. Let's celebrate it, and maybe let's do that for the people around us. And let's do that for our husbands, our daughters, our sons, 
our daughter and sons and lives, our mother and father in laws. Let's let's journal um, today, or if not journal, let's think about today of the virtues of those around us. Let's just sit down, maybe, and just on our knees, say a prayer for our gratitude of the people and of the virtues of the people around us. It almost makes me want to cry when I think of the virtues of people around us because they're so huge. So that's one of the different ways that we can think of virtues. The One of the other ways that we can think of virtues and that we can say yes to the virtues is we can know that we are all children of God. And in the scriptures, God says that he wants us to seek every good gift. Just like Jason Mraz singing to his daughter, I want you to have it all. God wants us to have every good gift. He wants us to be brave. He wants us to be passionate about things. Um, he wants us to um, be humble. He wants us to um, be able to feel his Holy Spirit too, right? And so every, if, you've, if you haven't um, thought of different virtue words, if you're having getting at a last coming up with virtue words, there's a few things that I would recommend. One, just Google um, virtue words. I remember at the beginning of this year, I think it was, maybe it was last year, maybe it was this year, I went through and I made a whole list of virtue words um, and, and kind of w which ones... Which ones do I want this year to try to bring more into my life? And which ones do I think, uh, you know what, I feel like, I feel like I'm, I've, I'm good there. You know, and not that you're ever perfectly, um, any virtue, but some virtues you're like, oh, okay, definitely more, need more of that. So that's kind of what I was doing. But, um, we can, anyway, so we can see which virtues are out there and, um, and then catch yourself and others in our circles being virtuous. You know what? This morning, I think I was like, or yesterday morning, I don't know. Sometimes the days kind of um, mesh together for me because I do so many of the same things every day, homeschooling the children. But um, recently, I, I saw my little, oh, it was yesterday. And so anyway, I saw Wesley playing with Xander and they had, they had, I had all these batteries in a bag so that if I ever needed a battery, I could, you know, know where they were. And um, they had found the batteries. And of course, Xander, Z our little four-year-old, had dumped them all over the floor. And, and Wesley and Xander were just playing on the floor with putting all these batteries in different um, combinations and beautiful patterns. And it, they were having so much fun with these batteries. Okay, so, and I said, hey, Wesley, you are so, you are such a kind big brother. You are so good at connecting with Xander. And um, later on in the day, I was saying, Xander, um, Wesley, who's our 10 year old, Wesley, you are like Xander's superhero right now. Like he always wants to be with you. He, he loves being around you because you're so cool. Right? And so speaking to our children in virtue words, speaking to ourselves in virtue words reminds us and others around us that we are virtuous. And that is amazing. Um, catch yourself. Like if you feel like I need to be more courageous, catch yourself at being courageous. Figure out like what can I do so what the, to build a little courage? What am I afraid of? What can I what can I do to start doing that? And the more I do it, the less I'll probably fear it. Anyway, so saying yes to the virtues in our life and just rec um, has a two-part thing. We recognize the virtues that we have. We celebrate the virtues that we and others have. And, and we work on the virtues that we want. So that's my take on saying virtues. If you have a take on, um, on virtues... Like, definitely put it in the comments on how to notice and develop virtues. So really quick, um, sometimes I'm like a go-go. Um, not like a go-go girl, but just like a go-go, always going type of person. And, um, and when I went to the Tabernacle Choir's, the, type of, the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Squares, so I went to their... Um, Christmas, I don't know whether it was their Christmas concert or their Pioneer concert. 
Anyway, but I, I was listening to Cecil sing. She's this amazing star from Scandinavia. And um, she has this absolutely, like, hauntingly peaceful voice. And she was singing this song, Slow Down. And I'm going to try to find it and post it in the comments. I don't know if you can find it on YouTube. I hope you can. Um, I'm going to try to find it. But it was just this amazing, amazing, amazing song. And um, I remember, in an, I love listening to general conference talks, as you all know, if you're following me. And um, Elder Uchtdorf, who was, or President Uchtdorf at the time probably, who was an, who was an airplane pilot, um, but he had retired from that profession. Anyway, what he was saying is he was saying that when your life gets super bumpy, that, that like, well, he was saying actually when, when you're in a plane and the plane is hitting a lot of different turbulence, he said, an inexperienced pilot will want to speed up to get through that turbulence as fast as possible. But an experienced pilot will slow the plane down and when you slow it down it's almost like you know like those bumpy roads that you sometimes hit or even like those speed bumps that you hit in life like if you're flying over those that it it just bounces way more right but if you're if you're slowing down like it's it's a so much smoother ride and he was saying that um that when life gets bumpy for all of us, and we all have different times in our lives when life gets bumpy, but when life gets bumpy for us, we should slow down. And again, usually I'm a go, go, go person, um, but there's virtue in slowing down, and there's virtue in going slowly, and connecting with ourselves, and connecting with God, in in. <clears throat> In seeing the situation more clearly, there's virtue in the slowdown. So I remember when I was at Rick's College, and I was in oh some some humanities class or some lit class, and I was a lit minor, a literature minor, and um, a psychology major, and so I was into the and I was super into the humanities, and um, we had to memorize this pop this poem by John Milton. And I don't remember the whole poem, but it was a poem about serving God and how can we best serve God? And this is a poem, and just thinking about this and remembering kind of makes me want to cry. But here, this was a poem about that um, John Milton wrote when he was starting to lose his eyesight which was a very, it was a huge hardship to him back then. And um, in this poem, it says two different things that I loved. It says, um, can we serve light denied? And um, kind of a poem to me connecting with John Milton's heart on how am I going to do my work if I can't see? How am I going to serve the Lord if I can't see? Um, sometimes, um, how, I'm gonna, how am I going to best do something if I don't have the perfect light that, that God can bring? And um, anyway, obviously John Milton was going through a hard time in his life. And, um, but the end, the poem ends with a, with a line, they also serve who merely stand and wait or something like that. I'll, I'll try to find the poem and post it for you. But that there's, there's a time to be a go-go and a push and a, a, um, a knowing your trail, seeing the vision and going for it. And there's those times when we might feel like the sight that we used to have, the vision that we used to have, is just not there, not coming. 
And if you're experiencing one of those times in your life, we also serve God by just trying to be quiet, trying to connect, and trying to feel what God wants us to feel and know what God wants us to know and do what God wants us to do. So, whether you're at the time of your life where you are just, you know your path and you're going full strong and you have all the strength in the world, or maybe you're at a time where the light is dim and you're struggling to see the light and life is hard and you need to slow down. We're, we're all trying to serve God in our ways. Anyway, so um, with that segue, and as I'm wiping the tears from my eyes, um, I think it's a perfect time to dive into lime because, first of all, it's an amazing essential oil. And at, that, at those times when you're doubting yourself, when you're hit by a lot of hard or heavy things, when um, when you're when you just want to crawl into your bed and sleep for days, lime can help. Prayer can help. Friends can help. Food, good food, good nourishing food, not the junk food, not the treats, can help. Um, but lime essential oil can help. I do think that God put things on earth to help. And I'm just letting, so Lyme, of course, what we know, so I'm going to start diving into what Lyme can do for us emotionally. So Lyme, the first thing we know about Lyme is it's a citrus oil. And to every citrus oil is a super uplifting oil. So your lemon, your lime, your bergamot, your um, tangerine, oh gracious, it's an amazing oil. Or your... Um, Okay, I don't know. Great grapefruit. Um, every single citrus oil is a mood elevating oil. So if you're feeling low energy, if you're feeling like you do want to just go into your climb into your bed and stay there for weeks, um, citrus oils can be very amazing. And lime is one of the most antidepressive, the most cloud darkness clearing. Um, um, darkness zapping oils out there. You're going to love lime. There's a reason why they've nicknamed it the oil of the zest for life. So I'm just going to read you a few things from this book. It's Essential Oils, Your Guide to Process, Release, and Live Free. You can get it at Aroma Tools or My Oil Life. But I think you're going to really love lime. It's going to become one of your favorites. If you haven't gone it yet, you haven't diffused it, you haven't put it in your water. Oh my goodness. A um, couple of drops of lime in, in Perrier. Um, the sparkling water is so good. Got to try it. Super got to try it. So lime imbues the soul with zest for life. When individuals have been weighed down with dis discouragement or grief, Wherever that grief is coming from, maybe you got a bad grade, maybe you did, um, maybe someone that you love has has um, left left your area, um, maybe maybe you're just being hit by a lot of different problems. Whatever the cause of your grief is, whatever the cause of the discouragement is, Lyme zaps that it breaks it up boom 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 like little lightning bolts coming down breaking it up lightning the mood lightning the mood ah oh, gotta diffuse some lime um it, it installs i'm skipping around okay it installs courage and cheer in the heart and reminds us to be grateful for the gift of life like life doesn't have to be perfect to be mighty good Okay, so I'm just going to say that sentence one more time. Life does not need to be perfect to be mighty good. Marriages don't need to be perfect to be mighty good. Children don't need to be perfect for us to absolutely love them. And our houses don't need to be perfect 
for us to appreciate them and be thankful for them and feel like there's no place like home in them. Okay, so Lyme cleanses the heart, especially when, when there's been an accumulation of to emotional toxins due to avoidance or repression. So if you're one of those people, like there's some people who get hit with something and um, it just kind of, it kind of just, I'm thinking of a duck and water just dropping onto the duck and the duck just like, um, it just goes off their back, right? So like quack, we used to say to our children, quack, 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 like, like water off a duck's back, meaning we don't have to get um, sidetracked with everything that hits us. But, but um, we also don't want to just hold on to the pain. We don't want to hold on to the grudges. We don't want to hold on to the sadness. And, and if we don't process through these emotions, that's what can happen. There's this book called Feelings Alive Never Die. Um, and I love that, just the title of the book, because um, I'm a big believer, boom, I'm a big believer that, that we need to process things, learn what we can from them, and then, and then release it, okay? So, um, if you have a lot, if you're feeling like you have a lot on your shoulders or a lot in your heart, just things, boom, your things have hit you and hit you and hit you and hit you and you've 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 just avoided dealing with them you've just tried not to look at them um life can help with that life can help with have the courage to look at them to process to learn what we can and let go right okay um this oil revitalizes, revitalizes the heart space giving room for light and joy um it clears discouragements and thoughts related to a loss or a loss of the will to live even. So when I say loss of the will to, to live, that's a super huge discouragement. That is a super huge grief. And sometimes that can hit us all at once. And sometimes that can hit us little by little until we realize, oh, I don't even feel like doing anything. And the things I used to enjoy doing, I don't enjoy doing anymore. Um, so the loss of a will to live can hit us two different ways, right? Um, but lime is one of the most uplifting oils that can help with this. Now, if you're like, if that's a description of you right there, um, I wouldn't say, oh, just drink lime oil, just diffuse lime oil, you're gonna be fine. No, 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 no. I would definitely say, please, please get some extra help. Get as much help as you can. I'm a big believer that when you have a problem that you want to solve, you should hit it from as many sides as you possibly can. Like, why not get the, say it takes a community to raise a child. Um, I know I'm so thankful for many people in my community that have helped make my children amazing. Um and that support me in myriad, a myriad of ways today. Um, but I do think there's also, like, let's, let's approach different emotional problems or problems that we have in our life through many different avenues. And essential oils can be one amazing, one amazing way of support. Okay, so just saying that. Lime shines the light on inner motives, hidden in the heart, and encourages emotional honesty. Oh, and we do. We do want to be more emotionally honest. When we are emotionally honest in kind ways, in loving ways, it, it just brings this peace into our life. Anyway, um, just saying this one really qu quick too before I, we move on. Lime can also assist individuals who have over, um, who have, um, developed their intellectual abilities in a, in a more unbalanced way. So they're all about the study and they don't take care of themselves physically. 
or they're all about the study and they're neglecting relationships, right? So Lyme can help bring balance to, to and help people see that other parts of life are necessary and enjoyable too and bring a gift to us. Okay, Lyme dispels apathy and resignation and instills hope, joy, courage, and determination in all of life's challenges. So if you're being hit by life, some heavy life challenges, some light life challenges, um, and who doesn't get hit with a challenge every day, right? Lyme can be your best friend in, in smoothing out our, how those challenges affect us. So the negative emotions really quick that Lyme addresses is being ap apathetic, just being resigned to saying it's never going to get any better. It's never, these things are never going to change. Like, anyway, I'm um, grieving, I'm um, having a loss of a will to live and feeling discouraged. And the positive properties that Lyme can help bring in is feeling courageous, um, feeling emotionally, having the vulnerability to be emotionally honest, feeling engaged, um, feeling revitalized, feeling determined, and being grateful for life. Again, life is is good even when it's not perfect. Um, anyway, so this book is amazing. It goes on to say a lot of other things about Lyme. Got to get the book if you want to um, learn more about Lyme emotionally. Tomorrow, super excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be, tomorrow we'll be doing our very last affirmation on this series of saying yes to life. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about the emotional, as sorry, not the emotional aspects, but the physical aspects of coriander, the oil of integrity, ginger, the oil of empowerment, and lime, the oil of zest for life. Okay, so super excited, ex excited for tomorrow. Okay, so hope you're diffusing two drops of coriander, two drops of ginger, two drops of lime. You're going to be loving it. Um, I'll try to put that song slow down in the comments. Definitely tell me your Lyme experiences. We want to, we can't wait to hear your Lyme experiences. And just reminded everyone that I am Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters, living the wholesome life. And I know that you have the power in you to make it a great day. Bye-bye.